What's going on guys, Alec here from Oz Fury Gaming. Today I'm going to be getting stuck into some more information that we've got from Star Citizen in regards to the ship matrix pages, as well as a concierge email that I got. So it starts off with, we can see here we've got a nice email talking about the Chairman's Club and how, you know, I've sort of put some money in the game and spent some time and blah, 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 blah. Very much a, I suppose you could say, realistic and quite high fidelity uh, immersion from the outside world for Star Citizen. So it was pretty nice to see that, but then it got a little bit more interesting than just this. So they've given us some in-game complimentary stuff, so we get like a whiskey pack and a handgun and blah, 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 which, you know, yeah, nice, looks beautiful. But the next bit is what really intrigues me. Pioneer preview. So Celius Cornier, how you pronounce it, he's the dude who uh, did Consolidated Outland Industries. And as we can see here, we will actually be getting a unique uh, look at the Pioneer tomorrow. Well, Friday for me, but Thursday for other parts of the world. And as we can see here, they talk about colonization. So it's definite that the Pioneer is going to be a colonization of sorts, whether it's a base builder or perhaps a ability to terraform in small sections or something. It'd be interesting to see what it goes on about. Noting too, we also got a nice look at what the new website's going to be looking like, possibly. Some concept art coming in, so that's going to be really nice and interesting to see what they do there. Now also too, if you haven't been aware, there's been black concierge cards going out, um, which basically allow you to get into certain VIP events in real life. And also too, the talk about here, they've been working on other t-shirts, and one of those was the Zion. So they've got different designs going on there, but they're just giving a rough look now, and that'll be coming out for concierge only. So that's going to be nice for those who've actually put some cash and time into this game. Now, if you're under this, like, unsure of what concierge is, it's basically you've got to spend over $1,000 in game, and then they give you this sort of special level, I suppose you could say, and then the more you spend up from there, the more high level you become. So, moving on from there, guys, let's take a look at missiles and missile hard points. So this is pretty standard stuff, very similar to what was talked about with the guns in regards to sizing, but it does change up a bit with the missile racks. So, missiles and torpedoes are two different things. Missiles are described as being fast, very agile, but not a huge payload, as torpedoes are designed to really hit hard. But if you're going to go up against small light ships, forget it, you're better off going something against like a Caterpillar or Starfarer. Now, the larger size missiles are size 12 on the Javelin, and the Polaris gets size 10. But the Polaris is a lot smaller and a lot more agile vessel, and there's been some talk about how the Polaris is meant to have the larger size missiles, or torpedoes, sorry. But let's be honest, it's still pretty high uh, missile or torpedo size for that size vessel. Now, as we can see here, we get a look at how the missile racks work. So the missile racks are basically, you know, you've got like a size 5, where you can have two size 4s, or one size 5, or four size 3. So it breaks down in the different sizes, it doubles up. Now, rocket pods is the next bit there, and rocket pods are unguided missiles, basically, and work in the same style as the missile racks. Moving on to cargo now. Now, cargo's changed a little bit. It used to be these really large numbers, and now they're really small, and it was a bit confusing there, especially when the 600i came out, and they had 16 SCU, and we're like, what the hell is going on? Well, it's made clear in the ship matrix, well, monologue, really. There's a huge amount of writing, not many pictures. So with that being said, let me sum it up for you guys. Basically, in these first few paragraphs, I talk about the different transporting jobs, how the different ships play off against each other based in a very small and short form, and what can also be entrepreneurial in regards to narcotics and vice. Now, in the next section here, we have SCU and commodities. SCU stands for Standard Cargo Unit, which is what's going to be the basis for all transport in the game. SCU has 100 units inside of it. And for example, if you have one beam, which could be equal to one unit size, you can fit 100 beams in one SCU. Or if you have one weapon, which is equal to 10 units, you can fit 10 guns or weapons inside that SCU. That's sort of what they're talking about. Now, one SCU can also be picked up and moved around by a person and does not need to be attached to a cargo grid. It can be sitting around on the ship, but does not be uh, magnetically held. Moving on from here, the numbers game. So what they're talking about here is trade-offs, okay? If you get two different ships, for example, uh, a Freelancer and the Cutlass, the Cutlass is much more aggressive, but trades off with having less cargo space compared to said Freelancer. Now, this creates a situation where you go, well, do I move more cargo? Where am I in space? Am I in a UEE, a UEE uh, space? Am I out on an outline fringe? Am I in Vandal space? What do I want to do? 
that's basically what they talk about in this section. Next part, packing for the job you have. Well, it basically covered what I was just saying in the previous section, but it's more about, you know, actual, the physics of quantum jumping, combat, and things like that too. So making sure that you have not just the right ship, but the right tools, that you're not overloading with cargo, you're not doing that sort of business, you know. Um, it's quite easy to just keep piling on equipment inside and, you know, getting better guns. But remember, if you have all the maxed out slots, you know, size 3 everywhere, whatever like that, you can carry more weight and it, it, it's a trade-off, all right? Next section here, the, you know, the true purpose of keeping cargo off grids. Now, when you have a cargo grid, it allows you to buy and sell via a terminal. If it's not on that cargo grid, you can't do that. But it allows, when it's off the grid, to hide um, from scanners. Also allows you to carry more cargo and things like that. But yet again, it has more trade-off. You can start overweighting. You can start um, also damaging cargo and objects because if it's not on that grid, like I said before, there is no gravity, no magnetic force to hold that down. Now, there are other things and technology going to come in the game to make the scanners hard to pick you up, but that's that. Now, this is a good one. The Reclaimer originally sold with 2,500 SCU. Now, it's listed as 360. What happened to it? Well, since the old and the new uh, ship matrix, they have changed to actually become more realistic. So, you know, the, the unit size before was a lot smaller. And they're going to go by one meter uh, cubed, right? But they've gone up to actually 1.25 meters cubed to allow for protection of cargo casing or if you have a refrigerated unit or anything like that, it allows for that spacing of bigger units. So moving on to the last section, guys, we have other items or utilities, what I think is better called for them. So utilities are anything that's not missiles, guns or thrusters. So we're talking power generators, shield generators, coolers, fuel tanks, that sort of thing. They come in five different sizes from grand vehicle, small, medium, large, and capital. Same as the ship sizing, funny enough. And these different items have item grades as well. D being you know, below subpar, they'll get you out of trouble. C being what you'd expect to buy on the vehicle if you went to like the vehicle dealer or you know, just generally on the market. B is you know, a slight upgrade, might have a sub item slot. We'll talk about sub items in a minute. And then A is like supreme, beautiful performance, and usually will have a sub item slot. Now, item classification, we have military, civilian, uh, stealth, industrial, and competitive, all pretty self-explanatory. You know, industrial is going to be more tougher than a civilian item, and military is going to be more focused around military stuff. Now, that's where sub-items come into play. These are like extra boosters that plug in to those items. So if you're running, say, for example, a Hornet, and you want better coolers, you know, so you've got A-class coolers, right? But you want to have them, you know, super crash hot, making sure they cool well. Well, you would put in the sub item to help with that. Now, sub items will wear out faster than um, your standard item. So, look, they'll constantly need to be replaced. But sub items are more based around larger ships. So, like, for example, a Constellation, a Starfare, or something like that. Uh, that's where I'd see them more, you know, because you've got to actually go there and replace them physically. It's not just a thing you do off your maybe glass eye, from what I read and what I understand of this. So, moving on from there, we have the FAQs. Now, they ask about computer blades, you know, are these sub-items? No, they're not. What they are is basically um, extra main items that would go into your computer slot. They're not sub-items, they're not boosters. They're worried about restrictions on class ship items. Basically, they're still working it out, but for 3.0, the ships are having the items that they've been originally um, advertised with, so that's all cool. And the last FAQ is, are there other items that I can swap out of my ship? Yes, there are. So the armor, for example, and batteries and all those sorts of stuff, the list that they've given us isn't the whole thing. There's more to the ship than just that. So that's really cool in my opinion, guys. So I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. Um, leave a comment, a like if you enjoyed the video and if you want to talk about it. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Hope to catch you guys later in the verse. Toodaloo.